Hello, I'm teacher Vicky, your online English teacher. For today's video, we're going to talk about the subject verb agreement, particularly the singular and plural noun plus action verb. Actually, napakaraming rules sa subject verb agreement, pero iisa-isahin natin siya at magsisimula tayo sa pinakasimple. Ito nga yung singular at plural noun plus action verb. So, kung gusto mong mas matuto pa sa English grammar at mas gumaling pa sa pag-iingles, tapusin mo ang video na ito. So, bago tayo magpatuloy sa lesson natin, gusto kong sagutan mo muna ang tanong na to. Which sentence is correct? The boy ran very fast. The boy runs very fast. Okay, so, kung kailangan mo pa ng oras para sagutan ito, you can always pause the video para magkaroon ka pa ng time para sagutan. So, huwag ka munang mag skip papunta dun sa next slide. Okay? Kung ang sagot mo ay letter B, the boy runs very fast, tama ka. So, mamaya, i-explain ko kung bakit tama ka. May isa pa akong tanong. Ito yon. So, which sentence is correct? The girls eat delicious food or letter B? The girls eats delicious food. So, ano kaya ang tamang sagot? Kung ang sagot mo ay letter A, the girls eat delicious food, tama ang iyong sagot. Okay? Galing. So, tignan natin at i-explain ko sa inyo kung bakit yon ang tamang sagot. Kung tama ang naging sagot mo sa first and second questions ko, Ibig sabihin, naintindihan mo na to or napag-aralan mo na to sa school. Pero kung mali ka naman, siguro kailangan mong samahan ako para mas intindihin pa natin ang rule na ito ng subject verb agreement. Kung ikaw naman na marunong na, pwede rin namang samahan mo ko para sagot na natin yung mga exercises dito. Alright? So, let's move on. So, here is rule number one. A singular subject takes a singular verb. And a plural subject takes a plural verb. Okay? So, paano ba natin masasabi na singular yung subject at singular yung verb? Para ang hirap intindihin, no? Singular subject, singular verb. Plural subject, plural verb. Okay? So, para mas maintindihan pa natin yan, balikan natin yun sagot natin kanina yung mga sentences natin para mas maintindihan at mas um, ma-explain natin itong rule na to. Okay, so para sa ating unang rule which is singular subject or noun plus singular verb. So, himay-himayin muna natin yung sentence. Kumbaga, i-analyze natin yung pangungusap na nandito which is the boy runs very fast, which is a correct sentence. Okay? So, tignan muna natin, nasaan ba yung subject? O yung tinatawag natin noun. Pero remember, hindi porket noun siya, siya na yung subject. Pag sinabi natin subject, siya yung pinag-uusapan sa sentence. Okay? For, for our subject here, ano nga ba yung subject natin? Of course, that is the boy. Okay? So, the boy, meaning iisa siya. Kung sinabi natin singular, it's only one. So, that is the boy. Okay? And then, let's try to look at our verb. Ano ba yung verb? So, we are talking about here the action verb. Which is the action verb? That is runs. Okay, how, we, how do we know that 
our verb o yung verb natin, gagawin natin may S or wala. Paano pa malalaman kung singular ba yung verb? Okay, ganito. Para ang hirap intindihin. Ano? Kasi pag singular, tandaan nyo, pag sa verb, ang singular yung laging may S. Okay? Yung tatandaan nyo. Halimbawa, dito sa runs, may S siya. So, ibig sabihin, singular siya. Pero, kapag doon sa subject natin or sa noun at nilagyan mo yan ng S, sabihin mo ba? Ay, may S. Ibig sabihin, singular yon No. Iba sa subject or sa noun at iba naman sa verb. Okay? So, again, sa subject natin or sa noun, kapag walang S, Diba ganun yun? Pag walang S, ibig sabihin, isa lang siya. So, that is singular subject or noun. And our verb, that is singular verb kapag may S. Okay? So, tandaan, singular subject, walang S, and then singular verb, may S. So, kanina, sabi natin, singular subject takes a singular verb. Ngayon naman, plural subject or noun takes a plural verb. Okay? So, again, when we say plural subject, mahigit yan sa dalawa or mahigit yan sa isa. So, ibig sabihin, two or more. Kapag sinabi kong Jose and I, dalawa na kami. So, it means plural siya. Pero pag sinabi kong si Jose lang, so that is singular. So, let's try to look at our sentence. The girls eat delicious food. So, our subject, of course, again, pag sinabi natin subject, ito yung pinag-uusapan sa ating sentence. Hindi naman ang food ang pinag-uusapan. Baka sabihin nyo, eh, yung food noun din yan. Pero, katandaan nyo, ang pinag-uusapan sa sentence natin dito ay yung girls. Madami siya. So, ibig sabihin, siya yung plural. Plural verb. Okay, so let's move on to our verb. Sabi dito, kapag plural ang subject, dapat plural din ang verb. Paano nga ba natin masasabi na plural ang verb? Tama, walang S. Okay, kanina kasi may S. So, ito ang tatandaan nyo, hindi pwedeng parehong may S. Okay, ganon. Hindi pwedeng the girls eats. So, kung ang plural natin, ang subject natin ay plural. So, ang plural din natin na verb, which is it. So, uulitin ko, sa verb, walang s. Oh, sana huwag kayong malito. No? Uulitin natin, kapag sa verb, ang singular doon, yung may s. Kasi, tandaan nyo yung s. Kasi nga, singular verb, s. Kapag plural verb, walang s. Okay? Pero, <laughs> kapag sa ating subject, may S. Yung ating plural. Okay? So, let's have some exercises or practices para mas maintindihan pa natin siya. But before I move on, isama ko na rin dito pala yung exemption to the rule. Meron tayong tinatawag na exemption to the rule, which is the I and you. Diba? Sasabihin natin, I, ako. So, ibig sabihin, isa lang. Pero, I and you takes the plural verb. Bakit ganon? E, ikaw ba? Pag nagsabi ka ba ng I like you, sasabihin mo ba? I likes you. Hindi naman, tiba Or you love me. Siyempre, you love me. Hindi you loves me. So, yun ang tatandaan nyo. Okay? So, again, I and you takes the plural verb. Laging walang S kapag gumamit ka ng subject or noun na I and you. So, let's have a practice. And dito sa practice natin, tuturuan ko kayo kung ano yung mga dapat nyong gawin para i-analyze yung sentence. Ano ba yung mga dapat or sunod-sunod na dapat nyong gawin? O titingnan nyo dun sa sentence para maging tama yung inyong sagot. Okay. So, for example, eto sa ating sentence, the children sing, sings beautifully. Okay? So, ano bang una mong titingnan? Siyempre, titingnan mo yung 
subject. Very good. Pero, okay, i-add ko na rin muna. Ipasok ko na rin muna. Kasi dito sa mga ginamit kong sentence, kumbaga, wala kang makikita na time signal. Pag sinabi natin time signal, yung makikita mo kung kailan nangyari yung um, event or yung action doon sa sentence natin. Pero kapag yan ay may nakita na kayo na yesterday, tomorrow, next week, later, o ibang usapan na yon So, next lesson na natin yon Pero dito, ito muna yung ating pag-uusapan. So, dito sa sentence natin ay ano lang ha, simple. Simple sentence lang. Okay? So, again, you have to look at our subject. And then, you will decide what kind of verb you use. Yung bang may S o yung walang S. Yan ba is singular? Yan ba ay plural? So, again, kung kailangan mo ng time, pwede mong i-pause ang video. Good luck! Okay, ko. So, kung ang sagot mo ay sing, tama ang sagot mo. Okay, so, tingnan natin bakit naging tama yung verb na sing. So, as we can see, sing is the plural. Plural verb. So, again, plural subject takes the plural verb. E ano ba yung ating subject? Siyempre, children. And children is plural because marami siya. E ano ba ang ng children? Child. So, pag child sa lang. So, dahil children ang ginamit dito, that is plural. So, that should be the children sing beautifully. Okay? So, now let's move on to the next. Okay, so sa tingin ko, ready na kayo para sa ating exercise number one. So, so let us read first the sentences. The man talk, talks to my father. Number two, the baby cry, cries so loud. Number three, Anna and Ruby buy, buys flowers. Four, the teachers teach, teaches their lessons well. Number five, I love, loves to go to the beach. So again, kung kailangan mo ng oras para sagutan ang exercise na ito, you can always pause the video. Good luck! Okay, so the answer for number one is talks. Kasi yung ating subject ay singular. Okay, so the man to be talks. Okay, so singular subject the singular verb. The answer for number two is cries. So, tulad ng number one, kasi yung subject natin, singular din. So, isa lang naman si baby. So, the baby. That is why our verb is cries, which is singular verb. Okay? So, again, ibalik natin yung ano, yung ating dapat reminder ba na kapag Walang, walang S doon sa ating uh, subject. Dapat may S dito sa ating verb. Pero, tandaan, hindi laging ganon. Okay? So, yun. So, isa lang yun sa mga parang um, clues. No? Okay. So, again, singular subject, singular verb. Alright. So, for number three, our answer is by, which is the plural verb. Because our subject is plural. So that is Anna and Ruby. So Anna and Ruby, dalawa na sila. So ibig sabihin, more than one na yan. That is already plural. So again, plural natin ay by without S. So for number four, ang sagot natin dyan ay teach. So again, that is plural verb. So our subject is Plural also because teachers, madami yan. So, may S yan. So, yon So, tandaan again, pag may S, walang S yung ating verb. And of course, for number 5, nako, alam kong alam na alam nyo to. No? So, ang sagot, I love because our subject is I. Kahit sabihin natin na I ay isa lang. So, Kasali siya sa exemption to the rule. So, I and you takes the plural verb. 
So that's why our answer is I love. Plural and then the exemption kahit singular yung ating subject. Okay, so kumusta ang ating score? I hope you got it all correctly. So, sana naka-perfect five kayo. So, kung hindi man, so pwede nyo balikan ang video na ito para mas maintindihan nyo ang lesson natin ngayong araw. Okay, so I hope may natutunan kayo. Okay, so thank you so much for watching and God bless. See you next time. Bye!